Hey y'all, my name is Cassie and I am the creator of Pieces of Scrap and today is my second market ever. It is September 16th and today I will be doing a pop-up shop inside of a local restaurant that isn't open for lunch. Um, so I am going to be there uh, um, from 10.30 a.m. which is when the event starts to 4, uh, 4 p.m. and behind me I have all of the things that I'm planning to sell at the pop-up shop. So I'm gonna show you guys everything that I'm planning to sell and what I'm gonna sell it for and how many I made. So first up, I have all of my keychains. I have four different types of fruit slices. So we've got the lime and we've got a lemon. We've got a watermelon and we've got orange slices. And all four of these different color variations are $6 each, and I made two of each of them. Next up, I made four strawberry keychains, and these are all made of blanket yarn, and they are $8 each. And then from my last market, I still have all of these pocket pets. I've got four different colors. I've got a fox one, I've got this blue guy, this green blue guy, and this pink guy. Next up, I've got all of my mini bees. And these mini bees are a little different from last time you saw them because I took out their antenna. I think their antenna were making them look a little goofy. They kind of looked like eyebrows on some of them. And so some of them looked like mean or upset or surprised. So I just ended up removing all of their antenna and I'm selling these a little bit cheaper than last time. Um, my first market, I was selling them for $10 each. I dropped them down to $6 because I'm trying to get rid of all my acrylic yarn plushies because people prefer this yarn over this yarn. Next up, I have all of my flower pins. These flower pins come in a bunch of different color combinations and variations, and I sell each of these for $4. Next up, I've got my strawberry turtle. This strawberry turtle took a lot of work and effort to make um, her because it's a sew, not a no-sew pattern, it's like a pattern you have to sew together, so you have to sew all of her fins on and her head on, and then the, the, leaf, the leaves of the strawberry on top. Um, and I am selling her for $36 just because of all the effort that I went, went into her. Next up, I've got this little puppy, which I'm pretty excited about. This is a cube little pattern. Um, I'm selling only one of these guys for $8 and hopefully people like it. I, I kind of made it and then didn't end up making another one because I thought it ended up looking like a koala. <laughs> which is kind of derpy, um, but hopefully people recognize that it's a puppy and not a koala and maybe maybe get some purchases out of this one. Next up, because Halloween is right around the corner, I made four little ghosts and um, this is a free pattern. I am selling each one of these for $10. Next up, I have chubby froggies and these are really quick to whip up so these are six dollars each and i made four of them after that we've got two of my chubby bees this is my pattern that i came up with i i wanted a, a bee that was like a little chunkier like that you can squish and has multiple stripes next up i have a duckling left over from my last market this is a little little guy free pattern off of instagram and i only have one of these left and it is $11. Next up, I have my Chunky Mushroom Boys. I've got three different color variations, and one of them is a little bit smaller than the rest of them. I've got two, uh, not two, I've got three of these purple mushrooms, and then I've got one left over from last market of this red velvet mushroom. These were selling like crazy at my last market. And then I made some red ones. I have four of these little red guys and as a size comparison, they're quite a bit smaller than the old ones, but they're not stuffed as much. And this is Premier, uh, Premier Parfait Chunky yarn, whereas this is a uh, Bernat blanket yarn and then a um, Yarn Bee Velvet yarn. So they're a little bit different in, in terms of weight, but I kind of like the smaller ones a little better. They're a little cuter selling all of these for $10 each. Next up, I have a teddy bear in overalls, and this guy took a lot of work. Um, I, 
made him off of a free pattern that I found on Instagram, but it took a lot of um, editing the pattern to get it to work the way I wanted it to. The pattern makes the overalls longer than this guy's actual legs are, so if you go with the pattern's um, instructions, he has like baggy pant legs that go past the bottom of his feet. And so you, like you can't see his feet or that like this is two separate pieces. And then I also edited it because I wanted the overalls to connect at the same point in the back. Um, in the original pattern, there's two straps that uh, connect just like a normal tank top in the back instead of the crisscross back. And in addition, I made his torso a little longer because the pattern makes his um, makes him look like he doesn't have a neck. So this pattern is a little different and it caused me a lot of problems. So I've only made one of him and he is $42. I'm hoping that somebody just sees him and loves and adores him and wants to pick him up for like a baby that's coming soon. Wow, the way that I said that makes it sound so weird, like it's like a new product or something. Like, like if somebody is expecting a child, I would hope that they would see this and love it and want something to give their kid that is a little bit more, um, more of an investment than other baby toys that are out there. Next up, we have one of my best sellers from the last market. I have my Triceratops. I have three of these purple ones left, and as you can see, I switched out his eyes because last market they had kind of big, gigantic eyes, and um, they just looked kind of crazy, but I've got three of these purple ones. I've got two blue ones. I've got two green ones. I've got two yellow ones. And I've got two pink ones. So I've got the entire rainbow of Triceratops and each of them is $8. I've got two types of chickens just like last time. Uh, they're the same number as last time. I will put the number up on the screen because I can't quite remember how many of each I have. I think I have six of each. Could be wrong though. Um, but these didn't sell good last market but I'm hoping that they do this market. I got lots of uh, comments about them last time like people saw them and really liked the chickens but no purchases um, but yeah I've got six of each I think and I'm selling them for $16 each next up I've got all of my gnomes I've got five different colors and if you looked at my Kofi website at all you would know that I am doing mystery gnomes on there so if you want a gnome you just gotta you gotta cross your fingers that you get the one that you want or just accept fate and what it, whichever one I decide you're gonna get, you're gonna get. So I've got four different color, or five different color variations and each one is really cool. If you didn't know, um, the two unicorns in my background right now are actually giveaway items that I am not selling. I think if I was to sell them, they would be kind of steep in price. So I'm doing a giveaway for each of them. One of them will be given away by people who come and sign up, um, follow my social medias and my YouTube and give me their email at my physical locations when I'm at a booth or a market or whatever. That is what one of the unicorns is getting given away for. And then the second giveaway is on my Instagram and all of the requirements to enter the giveaway are on my Instagram. So if you haven't followed me on Instagram, go ahead and Go over there, give me a follow, like my stuff, look at the giveaway for my unicorns on my Instagram to, to read all the rules and requirements in order to enter. Next up, we've got all of my pumpkins. I've got three different sizes of pumpkins and the discount that I'm running on these pumpkins at my booth is that if you get a bundle of three, that means three pumpkins of three different sizes, so one of each size, you get $4 off of your bundle. So instead of $29, it will be $25. So I've got all of these mini pumpkins. Each of these sell for $4 each if you buy it by, by itself. Got lots of different colors in here. Um, and then I've got my medium sized pumpkins. I've got all the different color variations. As you can see, as you saw in that bowl over there, these are $10 each by themselves. And then I've got my large pumpkins. These are $15 each by themselves. And if you get a little bundle of each size, they kind of look cute together and you can like display them as 
home decor somewhere in your in your house and I think it'd be nice for people to be p picking through my pumpkin patch so to speak to figure out what color combinations they want or if they all they want all their pumpkins to be the same color whatever they want to do they can they can be creative and come up with their own bundle. Last plushie that I have is leftover from last market as well. I've got my large bee that is $14. I just have one of them. And then getting into things that are not plushies, finally. I've got my can cozies. I've got four of each of these color variations. We've got the cactuses and the strawberries. The strawberry is my own pattern. The cactus is not. Each of these sells for $4. Wow, <laughs> each of these sells for $14 each. I'm not about to offer you a $10 discount on my cozies. <laughs> and then right along the cozy uh, category, we've got coasters. So I've got a set of three fruit coasters. We've got a watermelon, a grapefruit, and a lemon. And the set of these sells for $16. And then we've got my toddler and baby hats. So we've got uh, my toddler hat with the tassels. This one sells for $16. As you can see, I came up with kind of a creative way to display this so that you can actually see and appreciate the bare ears a little better and the tassels and know which way it's supposed to face. So I did this for both the baby bear and the toddler hat. So here's the baby bear hat. The yarn ball is a little bit smaller to showcase that this is for a baby and not a toddler or small child. This one sells for $12. Next up, I have my $4 bin, and this consists of my scrunchies, my headbands, and my bookmarks. Here are my bookmarks, the different kinds and colors. They're all $4, everything that I just listed off is $4 and I have a varying amount of supplies of each. Anybody ever just talk for like 10, 15 minutes to a camera and realize it's not recording? You know how I feel right now. <laughs> anyway, so I'll go over what I just meant to record again. Uh, I, I've been going over my bags. So we've got the produce bag. This one is $15. This is a nice mesh produce bag. Great for grocery shopping or going to a farmer's market. $15, I just have one of this. Then I've got my beach bag in green. This one is unlined and it is $15. And then we've got my lined beach bag. This one's amazing fall colors for right now. This one's $20 because it is lined. Then we've got my lined granny square bag. This one is not part of my crochet to-do list video. This was something that I made a long time ago that I used to carry my Bible around, but don't do that anymore. This one is lined with an old pair of, <sighs> with an old pair of jegging jeans. It's not really a denim, but it's like a soft cotton um, with maybe some, um, polyester or something like that. It's like a stretchy jean. Very soft. This one is $35 because it is lined. And then if you saw part three of my crochet to-do list video, you'd know that I made 10 granny square bags with leftover granny squares that were all this size. Crazy, I know that, that <laughs> there was like 400 of them or something like that, 320 granny squares, all of this size that at some point in time I thought would be a good idea to save up all my scrap yarn and granny squares and make a blanket out of it at some point, but I gave up after I made like 320 squares because I realized that that is not enough squares to make a full size blanket like I wanted. Um, so they became granny square bags and all of these are unlined granny square bags that have sew on snaps on the inside so that they snap closed. And if you are interested in learning how I put these together, of course the granny square tutorial is not part of that video, but I kind of lay out how I um, connected all my squares together and how I put the strap on the bag and all of that in part three of my crochet to-do list video. So if you haven't watched it already, I recommend you watch that if you're interested in learning how I did that. And then last of my bags, I have all of my flower purses and 
Thanks to popular demand by all of y'all who have commented on my video, my first video, I have increased the price of these bags because everybody was saying that I was selling myself short by only charging, what was I charging, like 40, 45 dollars for these bags. I put so much time and effort into each one of these bags. They have sew-on snaps on the inside and the inside is lined, hand sewn lined, mind you. I crocheted, I did like a knit crochet for each of the straps. I bought these lobster claws. I crocheted every single one of these crochet flowers and I single crocheted them all together to make these bags. So <laughs> thanks to all of you, you kind of encouraged me that I'm selling myself short on my flower purses. So I have marked them up to $55. Um, that being said, I have sold one um, under that price because that was prior to me marking them up. My final two items are familiar items that you've probably seen before. I've got this bath mat, this pink bath mat for $20. And then I've got my beach stripes shawl and this is $85. Noah and I got to Bear Hall about half an hour to 45 minutes before the shops actually opened and we got settled in the corner of the restaurant with other familiar faces from our church who are also small business owners, which was pretty cool. My display this time looked a little different because I added a shelf, an easel with my earrings on a cork board, as well as I kind of set up the small table on the side a little differently to display my velvet bear hats. And something I forgot to mention earlier was that I got this cork board to display all my earrings in, and I didn't show any of my earrings when I was going over what other products I brought to the pop-up shop um, and if you are curious about any of these earrings I actually made a crochet to-do list challenge in order to prep these earrings and I show almost every single one that I have on display at this pop-up shop in that video so if you haven't seen that video be sure to check it out once I got settled in, I started working on a scarf for a commission I'd received from the event coordinator while I was there, and I got pretty pretty far on it, um, but didn't finish it before I left. And we ended up le having to leave a little earlier than we expected. Uh, the event coordinator came by about 30 minutes after lunch or so, and she told us that she forgot, but there was a event, a private event in the restaurant starting at three o'clock so we expected to be there until four o'clock but really we had to leave by two o'clock so we started packing up at two o'clock and left shortly after hey y'all so it is september 16th and i'm back from my pop-up shop so we were expected to go until 4 p.m today but then the event coordinator realized that the uh, restaurant was holding a private event at three o'clock so we had to take off at two which was fine. By then, um, the crowd kind of died down. It seemed like uh, there was a lot of people trickling in during and right before lunch. And then after lunch, everything kind of like quieted down. There wasn't a lot of people. Um, so that gave me a break to eat some tacos that Noah brought me. <laughs> um, but other than that, there wasn't really a lot going on. Um, the event coordinator actually commissioned me to make her a scarf for um, I think her son-in-law and so I started working on that while I was at my booth and prior to that I was working on making beanies because I feel like I need to start cranking those out for um, Christmas and Crockett and Pumpkin Festival because I think um, because fall's coming around and it's no longer 100 degrees in Texas and we've actually been getting some rain and so it's been cooling things off. It's only been like high of 85, 90 the past uh, week or so. That means that people are gonna start thinking about warm, wearing warm, cozy clothes and that's pretty exciting. Um, so I know what you guys have all been waiting around for. You wanna see what I sold and how much I made and all of that. Um, and today I'm actually gonna tell you what I sold, how much I sold it for, and then I will show you um, my Excel spreadsheet and kind of walk you through how all of that works, where it pulls from, where it's getting all of these numbers to tell me how much I actually made. Hey y'all, so this is my spreadsheet. Uh, as you can see here, I have 
This is all my sales from the pop-up shop at Bear Hall and all of it above our different tables according to like online sales. My first market which was at Marketplace on Main. Peanut Festival is an upcoming one and so is Christmas and Crockett and basically my plan for every event I do will have its own little table so I can record what my sales are and basically how this table works is we grab the date from the right side over here the right side is kind of my key this is where I punch in what my booth fee was for that day what the actual title of the event was and where the event location was so for this one I did not have a booth fee because it was a free you know, small business event for people in Crockett, Texas. And this next column here is a sale ID. And basically this just groups, if somebody purchased multiple items in one sale, I use that same number to make a sale ID. So if a sale ID is all the same sale ID, you know, if it was a square purchase, it won't add on an, an additional 2.6% for that sale. It'll only factor in 2.6% of the total of these three numbers. So anyway, what you're all excited about is what actually sold. My first sale was a pumpkin bundle. That person paid $25 on Square. And as you can see here, it tells me what my net sale was after fees and taxes. And then it breaks it down into what my material cost and my time cost for those items were. And in these two columns over here, it tells me what my profit was in terms of the material profit and my true profit is profit that factors in how much I'm paying myself to make an item. So next up I sold a strawberry keychain and a mini triceratops and then my next sale after that was a pumpkin bundle and a chubby froggy and then next one after that was a mini turtle and a mini triceratops and then finally my last sale of the day was a cash sale of a pocket pet. Something else I kind of factored into this sale in particular was this person gave me a tip in cash so I actually had to add a dollar to one of these one of these prices so I think I added the, the dollar to the strawberry keychain so my strawberry keychains are actually eight dollars but she gave me a tip of one dollar and I didn't want to add a product line that would just say tip because it's not actually a product um, so I just added it to my gross sale on the strawberry keychain. So once we take all of this information and we break down how much it cost in materials to make the items that I sold and how much time I spent to make those items, my total profit with materials factored in but not my time was $70.82, which is awesome. And if we are looking at my true profit, which would be if we were talking about how much I would be profiting if I was paying myself, it would be $13.72, which is awesome because if we take a look at my last market, which was my first market ever, my profit was $25. And then when we take a look at how much time I spent on these items, I lost money. And I kind of talked about this in my first market video, but the reason that I lost money was because I was pricing items for lower than I should have. So now that we're in this part of my spreadsheet, I'll take, I'll take you guys on a little tour of how my material prices get broken down. So this is calculated in my variable expenses table over here. This table, I kind of list out any material that I could possibly be considering. And the first material is actually my time and my time is just priced per hour. So I just price it, put in here how much I would pay myself per hour if I was paying myself a salary to do this. So for example, if we're looking at a skein of yarn, um, this is Bernat Baby Light Acrylic Yarn. This is a really thin yarn that you can get at Walmart and it comes in a huge, huge yardage of yarn. So you get a, a 
1077 yards of yarn per skein so when I buy this at Walmart it's seven dollars and 48 cents and this number right here gets rounded to the nearest cent so it, it is a very cheap yarn to be working with it's it's only a cent per yard it's probably actually much much less than that but yeah so this table gets referenced over here this is how I price my products so uh, go ahead and I list what the product is called and then I list every material that I use and then it automatically does the calculations for me so it goes through and tells me how much I am paying to make that item so this chart over here kind of tells me how much I should price my items at the lowest dollar value. So this is a minimum cash price. This is if I was offering somebody a, a price if they were like paying me on Cash App or Venmo or um, any, any type of payment that doesn't make me pay a fee. All of my prices also actually include sales tax in them. It calculates that in this pivot table for me and I can't really tell you how I built this because I did not buy it, build this part of the Excel sheet. My husband actually did. He is an actuary and he does like pivot tables and stuff like that so I can't even begin to try to understand how all of this works over here but it does and I am so thankful that it does. So overall I think this market was a pretty successful one. I can walk away saying that I made $70.82 so almost $71 in profit at this market. Again, I don't really take into consideration my time as being a huge factor in my crochet business because I really enjoy making all of the items that I make and I don't think of it as a chore or anything like that to make the items that are in my inventory. I really enjoy doing what I do and I, you know, the time isn't really something that is a impediment to me. I really enjoy doing it. That being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up below and comment what your favorite part of this video was. Comment, you know, if you think there is something I can be doing better. If you have a market coming up and you're prepping, let me know what you're working on. Let me know what you want to see in the future in these videos and let me know if there's something that you don't want to see in these videos in the future. If I'm doing something wrong, you guys just got to tell me and I will change the videos just for you. I'm making this content for you, I'm making this content for other makers that are trying to do markets, and I want to be as informative as possible. See you guys next time.